Um, welcome to Wednesday Worshippers today. Welcome if you're joining us later on. Um, uh, it is pretty treacherous out there. Um, it's all right by car, but um, I've uh, I slipped over just outside um, my house this morning. You can see the little plaster on my hand. That was a uh, uh, yes. It was just a bit of black ice outside our house, so it's very easy to do. So we need to we need to take care on a day. And as I record this, the snow's coming down. Although it's sort of been on and off all morning, so um, yes, hopefully, uh, hopefully things will clear up, and by by Sunday, by next week, then we'll be we'll be back to uh, to normal, or whatever normal is anyway. The well, new the new normal, that's right. So um, uh, let's uh, turn to our service sheets anyway, and um, we'll we'll go through our, our morning prayer service, um, and. Um, yeah, let me read the introduction. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesu our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And let's pray as the Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. 
Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Psalm 95, the, uh, the, the psalm that we have as part of our service today. Um, we'll have, um, in a few moments, we'll have our, our psalm for today, but as we always have, we'll include Psalm 95. And um, why don't we say this all the way through, Psalm 95. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, our psalm for today is Psalm 54, which is on page 575 of the Church Bibles. So that's Psalm 54, and it's on page 575, if you want to follow along in the Church Bibles. And it's one of the, uh, the psalms which has a, uh, the little inscription at the top with the context. It says, um, for the director of music with stringed instruments, a masculine of David, when the Ziphites had gone to Saul and said, is not David hiding among us? So David had been um, exposed and uh, ha he had been found out. And this is what he said. This is the, his prayer, his song to God. Save me, O God, by your name. Vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God. Listen to the words of my mouth. Arrogant foes are attacking me. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. Do, do take a service sheet and a Bible from the, um, from the back there on the seat. Um, people without regard for God. Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains me. Let evil recoil on those who slander me. In your faithfulness destroy them. I will sacrifice a free will offering to you. I will praise your name, Lord, for it is good. You have delivered me from all my troubles, and my eyes have looked in triumph on my foes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 54, a lovely uh, psalm expressing our, uh, our confidence that God is our helper, and, um, and that actually those who, um, who may slander or those who uh, do not treat us well will not, will not be victorious in the end. And that um, it's good to remember that, uh, that God will have the victory. Well, if we turn back to our, uh, our service sheets, and we're going to say together the uh, Te Deum Laudamus, I'm, not, I'm never quite sure whether that's Laudamus or Laudamus. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's a hymn of praise to God. And that's what it is. And um, although at the moment we can't sing, we can uh, speak our praises to God. And this, this is full of praise. And so let's, uh, let's say together. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee. 
the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee, the goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee, the noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name, ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. And those are, are wonderful words, which are um, as good as any of the hymns that we sing. Um, well, there we go. We're going to have our Bible reading now. and We're going to look at John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15. So if you'd like to follow that in the, uh, in the church Bible, I'll tell you the page number in just a second. Uh, page 1069. Page 1069. So uh, we are working our way through, during these first few, few months of the year, first few weeks of the year, we're working our way through John's Gospel. And in particular, we are looking at the seven signs in John's Gospel. And uh, this is sign number four, and um, we're going to be thinking about this um, briefly after, after the reading. Um, but let's take a moment to, to read it first. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him, because they saw the signs he had performed by healing those who were ill. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About five thousand men were there. Jesus then took the loaves gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, 
Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the seven signs, as we've been uh, seeing, as we've gone through, uh, gone through John's Gospel, are looking at who Jesus is, and they're exploring who Jesus is uh, from different angles. So if you think about it as if you know, each sign sort of gives us a different, a different window, a different window into who Jesus is with each one. And each sign is a challenge for us to believe and to trust in him. So each sign is, is helping, is a sort of a message for us. Now, in John chapter 6, uh, two of the signs come together. So we're going to look at the first sign this week and then the next sign next week. As you can probably see in your Bible, the next week is Jesus walking on water. Um, and that, that there's a reason why they come together and we'll, we'll come on to that. But let's look into what this sign has to say to us first. So um, the, Jesus and the disciples, they cross over and they go to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. And there's a great crowd of people following them. And they're following them because it says they saw the signs he had performed by healing those who were ill. So you remember, um, as we've, we've looked at a couple of times over the last couple of signs, and that's what Jesus has, has done, isn't it? He's healed um, the, the um, paralyzed man and, um, and so on. And so the people, they see the signs and they follow him. And you might think, are the people really believing in, in Jesus at this point? Or are they just thinking that Jesus is someone who can, um, who can uh, do, do what they want? You know, who can do miracles? What, what, what are they thinking when they're following him? And... Um, that will, become, um, that will become apparent as we go through. Um, so Jesus goes up on a mountainside, he sits with his disciples, and it says the Passover festival was near. Now remember what happened at the Passover. You remember back at the first Passover, that this was the, it was uh, number 10 of the 10 plagues that God sent upon the Egyptians to, you know, the people of, of Israel were in slavery in Egypt. And God, uh, sent Moses to say to Pharaoh, you let my people go. And he sent 10 plagues to, uh, to encourage the Egyptians to let them go. And Pharaoh kept resisting until the 10th plague, which was the death of the firstborn son. And on that night, um, God said to the people, I want you to, to kill a lamb and I want you to paint its blood over the doorframe of your house. And I want you to eat the lamb. And that will, uh, the, the angel of death will pass over you. You will be safe by the blood of the lamb. And, um, uh, and that's what happened. That's what the Jews were to remember every year at the time of Passover. So this is, uh, I think, significant given what's, what Jesus is going to do. It's, uh, the, there's a reason why John has, um, has included this here. And so Jesus, he, uh, he sees a great crowd and he says, well, where should we buy bread for these people to eat? And I always think, you know, did Jesus have a sense of humour? Well, I mean, can you imagine 5,000 people um, coming and, and, you know, being around? And uh, him just saying eh, to Philip, you know, where should we buy bread for all of these people? I mean, it's a, uh, um, he must have thought, you are joking. <laughs> um, but it, it said it was to test him. It's to test whether Philip really believed. You know, was he actually believing and trusting that Jesus could provide and could sort, sort this situation out? Well, Philip, unfortunately, he doesn't pass this, this particular test. He says that it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. So Philip doesn't pass this particular test. Um, but it made me think, you know, would we pass that test uh, if we were in that same situation and we saw 5,000 people and um, Jesus said to us, 
know, where are you going to get all the money to, to, to feed these people? And um, I think we would, well, for me, certainly, I think my first thought would be, well, I don't have enough money or can't get to the shops enough or, or whatever. You know, my, my first instinct would be to go to the human physical things rather than, rather than to, the, um, to Jesus and look to him to sort things out. So um, another one of his disciples, uh, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, says, he is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? And uh, I think here it's, it's a little, um, you know, by contrast, uh, the lack of faith of the disciples is contrasted with a small boy who, um, I mean, I don't know quite how it happened, it's, we're not told, but you know, perhaps the boy came up and said, oh, you know, I've, maybe he overheard them talking and he said, well, look, I've got, you know, five small barley loaves and two fish. Um, and, uh, and they probably laughed at him and thought, well, how, come on, how far is that going to go? There are 5,000 people here. But the boy had enough faith to, to offer that. And so Jesus said, well, look, make the people sit down. And, uh, and, it's, and that's where we're told there are about 5,000 there. He, he took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them. And, um, and then he did the same with the fish. And it says as much as they wanted. Now, think about um, think about the words that they used here. Um, you know, he he took took the loaves, he gave thanks, and then he distributed it to them. Now, those words we are, are quite familiar to us from elsewhere, aren't they? You know, and in Wednesday worshippers, we'd often have the communion service here in normal times. Unfortunately, these aren't normal times, but that's. That's normally what we would do, and so um, and so this is this is what Jesus did, and I think it's meant to to help us to think about uh, about communion. It's meant to raise that image in our minds because that's uh, in a sense that's like what the, the Passover is for us. Um, and so the, all the people that had enough to eat, and he said, "Gather everything left over and let nothing be wasted." So uh, in the original Passover, God had said to each, uh, each household, uh, take a lamb for your household. He said that, um, you know, it's just, it's just to be enough and anything that you do not eat is to be, to be burnt. You know, don't, don't save it, but it's just meant to represent, you know, one lamb is enough for you and, uh, and for all the people. Um, and so um, there was to be nothing left over. And so they, they did, and they gather 12 baskets uh, with, the, with the bread, with the five barley loaves left over by those who are eaten. So the bread fills 12 baskets full. And 12, there's a number that we recognise, don't we? There's a number. There's 12, 12 tribes of Israel. There's 12 disciples. What is, what is God trying to say here? And this number, I believe, is um, meant to say something to us, which is that God is gathering a new people in the same way that the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel got brought out of, of slavery uh, in Egypt. So God is forming a new people and it's through Jesus. And uh, when the people had seen the sign that Jesus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come. But Jesus knew that they intended to come and make him king by force, so he, he withdrew. And so the, um, the people, they were right in a sense, weren't they? That they understood that Jesus is the prophet who is to come. But Jesus knew that his, his role was not to be the king. Jesus knew that that was not the, the right thing for him. Uh, for, for, for him. It, you know, the people shouldn't have, uh, have done that. So, um, so Jesus escapes. So they get some things right and some things wrong, but Jesus, he knew that he had a mission and he had to accomplish that in order to fulfill um, the things that we've been, we've been talking about. So let's uh, draw a few threads together as we come to, to the end of this, uh, of this passage. God is building his people. You think about um, what happened to the ancient Israelites coming out of Egypt and coming into the promised land 
uh, the Passover and all of that. That's, that's like a picture of what Jesus does. And that is a, um, you know, it's like saying escape from Egypt is slavery to sin. God brings us out of that through the blood of the Lamb, through the blood of Jesus, and brings us into uh, the promised land. And, it, and it's through Jesus, the Passover Lamb. So God accomplishes in us all of these things through Jesus. But it's not just a, a sort of spiritual thing. It's not just salvation. It's not just a forgiveness of sins. But it is a, a physical thing as well. And that uh, Jesus does uh, provide for our physical needs as well as spiritual. I was thinking a little bit of um, Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. So God does provide for our physical needs as well as our spiritual ones. And um, you know, think of what Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Um, and I think this is the question that I'd just like to, to finish with, which is that do we see both our spiritual need and our physical need? Because I think a lot of people see their physical need very clearly and we focus on that, but we ignore the spiritual need bit. But actually Jesus, he is the one who's capable of providing for our, for our physical need. And perhaps what we need to do is to, to look instead more to our spiritual need, come to Jesus for, for forgiveness and for the transforming power by the Holy Spirit. And then our physical needs will follow. And Jesus can provide. He can provide for our spiritual needs. He can provide for our physical needs. But the most important of those is the spiritual and that's what we need to, uh, to look to him for. Well, let's take a moment to pray as, uh, as we close and ask God to help us. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to, to see our spiritual need as well as our physical. And to see how important it is to come to Jesus and to receive forgiveness and transformation uh, through Christ. We pray that you would... Uh, help us to trust you in every way, both spiritual and physical, and walk with you this day and every day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, we're going to say our um, Benedictus now, back on the uh, back on the service sheets, the Benedictus, the um, lovely part of uh, Luke's Gospel, which is um, just a just the right time of year for it really, isn't it? Um, we just um, had this uh, just a few weeks ago as we were thinking about um, uh, what happened just after Jesus was born. Now let's uh, say these words all together. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the dayspring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
and let's say the creed together, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Well, we're going to pray, and I had a message um, yesterday from Jackie, who's saying that sadly uh, Wynne died. Um, I know some of you may have uh, uh, known Wynne. Um, she was in a care home, and she's been quite poorly. Um, but um, yeah, she died um, uh, a few days ago, so we can pray for, uh, I think, her niece, uh, her family, and um, those, of course, who are, who are mourning. Uh, also, let's pray for uh, Gordon and Chris, um, knowing that um, Gordon um, fell and was in, is in hospital. Um, so let's continue to pray for, uh, for him um, as well, and um, let's pray for any others who are uh, particularly in, in need at the moment. So let's take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, even in the midst of, of these times. And we praise you that uh, you are still God over our circumstances, over the events that are happening. And we do pray, Lord, that through this time that many people would come to know um, their spiritual need and seek, uh, seek the fulfilment of that in Jesus Christ. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for those who do have physical needs at the moment. And um, we do pray for those with, uh, with children who are uh, off school and who are struggling um, at the moment. We pray for those who are struggling with isolation um, or uh, other, uh, other issues. And we just ask for your hand of protection upon uh, each one of us as a church family and uh, as a parish. Maybe let's take a moment to think of anyone who um, needs uh, our prayers particularly today. And Lord, we do, um, we do uh, particularly think of Wynne's um, friends and family. And uh, Lord, we're sad to hear that, uh, that she died the other day but we also know Lord that she's in your care and in your hands and we thank you so much Lord that uh, for her uh, membership of the church here for her uh, friendship and we do pray that you would be uh, near to those who are uh, grieving at the moment and we pray for uh, Chris and Gordon and pray that you would bring healing for, um, for Gordon uh, in the hospital and um, pray that uh, he would have a right diagnosis and be able to get 
um, to get back home soon. And pray for Chris at the moment as uh, she must be worried. Please help her not to worry. Uh, but know things are in your hands. And we pray too, Lord, for Sylvia and pray that you would um, be near to her also with uh, having had the, the fall the other day. And uh, pray that uh, she would uh, really soon recover and be able to come home. Um, so we just pray for her and for the whole family, Lord, to put their trust in you and know that you are with them. And so, Lord, we do commit all of, uh, all of us to you, all of our church family, all those we know and love to your loving care. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And two colleagues um, on the back of our service sheet as we um, bring our prayers to a close. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all the sorts of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always what is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, just um, uh, one or two very brief notices as we come to a close. Um, we are back on a Sunday, uh, as of this last Sunday, uh, only at St John's at the moment. Um, I expect you've, you've probably heard that or seen it on the, the newsletter. Um, but that's um, one little good thing to, to give thanks for. And we're hoping to reopen St Mark's sometime within the next few weeks. Um, so we just uh, thought that St John's being the bigger building um, is a, a good place to open first. And then here um, we can open again um, when things have continue to improve. And it's looking like they're, they're improving quite rapidly at the moment. So that's really good. Something to give thanks for again. Um, I think that's, that's more or less everything for... Um, for the notices, um, I didn't even check the birthdays list there, but I don't know if anyone from regular Wednesday worshippers has, has a birthday this week. I don't think anyone does. Well, there we go. If you've got a birthday, I'm very sorry, but um, there we go. Happy birthday, if. <laughs> um, well, let's close with our conclusion here um, on the back of our sheets. And why don't we say all these words uh, together, the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thanks very much, everyone. Hopefully see you. See you soon.